Good evening everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another update on your weather forecast as we are seeing big weather pattern changes coming by the weekend into early next week that could bring some very cold temperatures and rounds of snowfall for the Rocky Mountains as well as for the Midwest and the Great Lakes. Also, if you're new to the YouTube channel and you like the detailed weather content, please consider subscribing if you're new, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. So as always, here's a look at the latest Euro model for Thursday evening, January 26th and the 27th. And we can see, here's a look at that winter storm on the Euro model for the Dakotas, also for Minnesota. This is a pretty weak system, not going to bring a whole lot of impacts, only blizzard warnings up here, and that's really Really about it with this wet winter storm that moves through maybe winter weather advisories up here but the extent of this is really looking weak by all standards nothing too big at all maybe between one to three inches of snow at the very most with this winter storm as it moves across the Great Lakes the next winter storm that we're going to have to keep an eye on is going to be up here in the Pacific Northwest like Montana, Wyoming, Idaho for Friday afternoon into Friday evening. That's going to bring in some light to moderate snowfall and then the system is going to get better dynamic here especially later on in the period. Actually a little piece of that energy does move across portions of Dakotas. Uh, and also for Iowa by Saturday into Sunday. You can see it right here. See this blue? That indicates light to moderate snowfall, but more on the light side by all standards. Down to the south, looking at some light rain by most means. If you're in northeastern Texas, if you're in Arkansas, nothing too significant with this system. And also a little bit of snowfall again, like we just mentioned, part of that system. And there's going to be several perturbations coming off of this one system and they're going to be ejecting over the Midwest. The second perturbation is down here. This is going to bring in more significant rainfall and flood concerns over Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Georgia. But again, we're not looking at a whole lot of impacts as far as freezing rain goes, snow, sleet, that sort of thing. No big severe weather with this one just yet. To the north, there's going to be some light snow for your Sunday into Monday. But again, really not looking very impactful by any means. A more impactful thing will be the cold temperatures. More on that in a little bit. But look at this. That system is going to be still stuck in here across the, um, the Great Basin over the Four Corners. That same system that's really having a long time getting further south here. It's going to just kind of um, just kind of slowly move along uh, with the overall pattern. By early next week, by Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when the next system does try to develop. And this one might still bring in a threat for some freezing rain and some snow. Now, freezing rain is a little bit more trickier to forecast. But you can see that perturbation there moving into the eastern seaboard, into the northeast, bringing light snowfall accumulations a little bit of rainfall to the south of that and then another disturbance tries to develop with that same a system that is going to be going across the Great Basin into the weekend into early next week and that's going to bring in more rainfall for the deep south for Texas by Thursday into Wednesday and oh wait Thursday into Friday excuse me got my days mixed up uh, for the southeast here by Friday into Saturday February 3rd and the 4th you're looking at again some light to moderate rainfall that is anticipated. You're going to get hit a lot with a lot of storms here for the southeast and for the deep south. More freezing rain potentially and more snow that could be a big problem. But again, this is really far out and that's why we cannot just rely on the European model. The GFS model trying to sniff something out too. But again, there's a lot of uncertainty here beyond seven days. Snowfall totals, again, going to go through this pretty quickly. Anywhere between uh, about four to eight inch or about say five to ten inches for the most part for Montana for northern Idaho for Wyoming you might get a little more than about ten inches maybe a foot or so some of the higher elevations maybe up to two feet of snow and then that system that we were talking about could bring anywhere between four to eight inches of snowfall across the southern portion of South Dakota northern Nebraska into central and northern Iowa southern Wisconsin northern Illinois northern Indiana northern 
Ohio, much of Michigan, and also into the upstate New York and upstate portion there of Pennsylvania, like Erie, Pennsylvania, could get that belt of light to moderate snowfall accumulations, including for northern Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Nothing much to the south here over the next four to five days. And again, because we're not seeing too much of organized snowstorms here, we're just going to cut this short and only go out to four days for the sake of things. So we can see four day snowfall totals anywhere between, again, uh, as low as like say two to four inches in some areas to as much as one to two feet in the highest elevations here, depending on where you're at. How much rainfall are we anticipating? Anywhere between two to four inches. If you're in the deep south, if you're in the southeast, some of these areas here could get as much as four to seven inches of rainfall. So in the 10 day period here, you can be looking at quite a bit of rainfall, but you can see here, there's a little bit of uncertainty. If we look at the previous run, little lesser rainfall amounts and lesser beyond that. So there's a little bit of uncertainty here, but the long story short here is you're gonna be seeing quite a bit of stormy weather that's gonna bring in um, just rain after rain after rain. It's your guys' turn to get all the wet weather here and some flooding is also possible. So keep that in mind. If you're uh, doing anything outdoors, much of next week, you could be getting impacted by several weather systems that could bring rain, more uh, flood concerns, and maybe some marginal risks of severe weather from time to time. Temperatures, here's a look at those temperatures really quickly. We can see uh, for tomorrow, uh, temperatures for Texas, for Louisiana in the uh, mid to upper 50s, not too warm, not too cold, just perfect for this time of the year, actually below average to say the least. But look at this, to the north, you're gonna have more colder temperatures, 20s and teens out there for your Friday, okay? And also for um, California, gonna see some cooler temperatures and this is gonna continue. The next cooler bit of air really comes in by the latter part of the weekend. We can see temperatures here in Canada, Manitoba, Saskatchewan. Um, if you're in Alberta, if you're in British Columbia, Canada, temperatures negative five to negative 15 degrees, negative 10 to negative 20 degrees up here across central and southern Canada. Hudson Bay gonna see some pretty chilly temperatures there, negative 10 to negative 20 degrees. And then of course, for the northern tier of the United States, anywhere between about zero degrees to negative 10 degrees for the most part. We are looking at some very cold, well below average temperatures. We could still squeeze out some record low temperatures, but we're not looking at as cold of temperatures as what we thought two days ago when the models were going really crazy at seeing maybe some historic record cold temperatures. But nevertheless, it's gonna be still really cold here. Um, negative, uh, in the negatives for the most part here over the Dakotas. You're not gonna warm up very much, by the way. Only single digits to negative territory. So get used to it. It's gonna last for a little while. And also that colder air will try to sink further south like into North central Texas, into the Midwest, the Ozarks, the Great Lakes, the Northeast you're gonna be really cold. Temperatures, again, in the single digits to negative territory from nighttime to daytime. And also for the West, gonna feel the chill too by Monday and Tuesday next week. Gonna be temperatures in the upper or upper 40s to lower 50s for a lot of us, okay? And that that's gonna continue. And then maybe the pattern changes beyond say seven to 10 days as more zonal flow increases. And that could mean, again, much of this colder air will retract back up to the the north but still we are looking at some very cold days ahead by or for much of next week temperature anomaly forecast really quickly we can see on uh, temperatures anywhere between 20 to 30 degrees below average throughout today and that's going to continue through Sunday for the weekend for the Four Corners region. You can see for the Pacific Northwest for Montana, temperatures 20 to 30 degrees below average for your Sunday morning. So make sure you bundle up. Warmer than average temperatures are anticipated for your Sunday morning and that will carry on into Monday morning and also Monday afternoon with below average temperatures continuing over the Western half of the US. Actually much of the US is gonna finally <laughs> feel the colder air. And that's gonna really be about it as far as the European model shows, as far as the colder weather. It's still gonna be colder than average, but we're not seeing 
30 to 50 degrees below average. Instead, we're going to be warming things up a little bit, anywhere between 5 to 15 degrees below average, but still colder than average, just not as deeply below average as what it will be like for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday for some locations here for the Pacific Northwest, for the West Coast of the U.S., as well as the northern tier of the United States, including for Canada. Definitely going to feel the chill out there. Well, that's going to sum it up for today's video. If you did enjoy this video, please consider giving a like, sharing this video with your family and friends on social media, and also please consider subscribing and ringing the bell notification icon so you do not miss out on any videos that I do have. And also check out the Mesovort WX um, website. There's a link in the description below this video. It's free to join today, and I'm excited to see you all there.